Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. I am your host, Lucy McMonagle. Women are recreating the rules for business, leadership, money, and they are changing the world in the process. Each week, join me for empowering messages and interviews that will inspire, motivate, and transform you. Giving a special shout out to Gordon Weary for creating the custom music that you are listening to now. Now, let's get started. Hello, hello. It is Michelle PW, your host of the Love Base Money Podcast, and of course, the founder of the Love Base Business Movement. We are taking it by storm. We are learning how to shift our businesses from the fear based to the love based, and it is fabulous. So, if you want to join the movement, make sure you check out the blog, lovebasebiz.com. And today, we are really digging in because uh, into this whole wealth consciousness. So I'm, I'm really excited about my guest. Because, well, I, I, that, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I, I, we're, I, I'm really excited to, to, to dig in and learn more. But you know, quite honestly, this is this is the kind of stuff that sometimes we need, we just really need to just figure out as you know, how we can actually have a better relationship with money. And how in the steps that we can do to really cultivate a wealth consciousness because wealth and abundance you know all of that is different and I think the more we can move more to wealth instead of just attracting more and more money I mean you know there's certainly people out there and I know I was one of them where you can make a lot of money but then you can also spend a lot of money so you're not actually building wealth (laughs) you're just kind of transferring energy you're transferring the money energy from making it to spending it. So if you really want to shift, you need to shift uh, not only your relationship with money, but your relationship to wealth. And so I'm really excited to be talking to my guest and her name is Lucy McMonagall. Did I say that right, Lucy? Absolutely. You oh, did. Good. Yes. That's like my, since I, since I taught myself to read when I was three years old, I have a hell of a time with people's names. So <laughs> that's my dirty little secret. Um, so it's probably good that I'm doing this podcast and I have to say people's names. Anyways, uh, Lucy, why don't you share everybody a little bit about you and what you do? So I am a Miracles Abundance Breakthrough Coach, and I empower entrepreneurs to really open up their minds, their hearts, so that they can start noticing all of the money they're leaving on the table when they're in their business and how they are actually creating this incredible movement, even if they're unaware of it so that they can bring more wealth, more abundance, and more joy into this world and allow other people and themselves to have more freedom. Yeah, I I mean, I'm, I've been really thinking a lot about this whole, I mean, you're the absolute perfect, well, of course, everything's always perfect, but you are the perfect guest to have because I've been thinking a lot about this this week. I, w- I happened to watch um, a couple of documentaries about some celebrities and I realized watching it that, you know, they actually, you know, as much money and as much fame as they have, and you'd think that their lives are fine, you know, a lot of them have jobs. I mean, it is a job. They're getting, they have to like go be on stage five, six, seven nights a week. They And if they're not doing that, they're not getting paid. So there really is a job mentality versus a wealth mentality. And I really think that's something to, you know, we really need to kind of explore. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We definitely need to explore that. So why don't you share a little bit about your, uh, so your, your story to your money story. So my money story, it started out pretty rough. My mother and father divorced and we grew up on welfare. Fast forward to my early twenties, I started the cycle over. So I was having to choose between eating crackers or feeding my son Um, and I made a vow that I would never, ever be in this situation again. So I went in the complete opposite direction and I started stockpiling money and saving it and putting it in investments. And, and I was obsessed with creating what I perceived was quote unquote security. And 
when I got to a certain point, by the time I was 32, I've already bought my first house, already bought my first car. I had more money in my savings than my family has ever seen in their entire life. And my financial advisor wasn't putting my money in safe investments. She was putting them in more risky investments, and I lost over a million. Oh, my goodness. I've never talked to anybody who's lost a million dollars before. (laughs) That was the first time. (laughs) Oh, oh, there was was multiple times. (laughs) (laughs) That was the first time. And it, it, it didn't quite crush us. It didn't quite crush me. But it definitely made me panic a little bit. But I, I still felt I still had that security because I had over over a million still. And then when she lost half of that, that's that's what really, really crushed me. And I realized that you can stockpile money all you want, but at the expense of what? I lost my health. I lost my house. I lost my marriage. So when you're building wealth, what I teach about wealth and abundance is learning how to really focus on your relationships and not just your relationships with your partners and with your children and with your family, but also focus on the love that you have within yourself, but having the relationship that's a healthy relationship with money also. Yeah, I that's that's part of the reason why I'm I'm just so excited to do this podcast and and the love based money and mindset book because I do think that that's the, the that's the key for a lot of our issues um, why we why we are so much stuck on the fear based grid because because of our relationship with money or our relationship with money is so twisted into fear that um, it's kind of twisted everything else up exactly and money is is a phenomenal reflection of what's going on in our inner world and it's a reflection of our subconscious it's a reflection of our belief system and a lot of times we don't equate money with a quote unquote relationship and sometimes we feel that it's an either or we have this mentality that either i can have a career or I can get married and have kids. Either I can make a lot of money, or I can spend time with my friends. And this division within our mindset has created the ability to create wealth nearly impossible. And today I would like to really empower who's listening on how do you make inroads so that you can have it all. So how did you, and I'm so excited to dig in and do that. And is this kind of the basis, like how you got out of it? Like, how did you finally, yes. yeah, okay. So like when you, you you know, when you lost half and she lost half. Yeah. I mean, what what did you do after that? I, 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 I need to, I, I want to hear the end of the story or at least one, at least the next piece <laughs> of it. Yes. So the, 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 the second time after I lost the house and in the marriage and, and everything. I, I had total freedom. So I I didn't technically lose the house. It didn't go into foreclosure. I sold it. So it wouldn't go into foreclosure or anything else. And I sold all my possessions. I packed my car with what fit in my car. And I left. I left where I was. And I, I went on a seeking journey to really discover what am I meant to do? What is my soul calling me to do? And how can I bring that into the world and still have a viable living with it? And so my next step was to really start going deep inside of me to discover what really makes me passionate, what sets me on fire, what makes me excited when I wake up in the morning, and how can I bring that into the world? And so the next step is really finding out what, well, making the decision, <laughs> then really finding out what makes you passionate. I mean, Michelle, you're so passionate about love-based business and love-based copy and really bringing love into the world and creating positive, healthy relationships 
as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. And so that's what wakes you up in the morning. That makes you excited. For me, empowering other individuals so that they can have true, true wealth and true abundance from the inside out, it inspires me. It wakes me up. And I've always been excited about money. And I've always been excited about entrepreneurial journeys. So really moving forward, what are you passionate about? And how can you turn that passion into a service that somebody would like to use? And then that led me into coaching. Because I was a spiritual healer, a spiritual advisor, and I had this spiritual money mentality. <laughs> and then learning what your worth is, your true worth, not not what people, quote unquote, when they go to a, a regular job, what their employer is willing to pay them, but what is your true worth and being able to incorporate these new feelings, these new belief systems into something that's viable, even if it's just something on the side, even if it's just a hobby on the side, if you're still working full time and you're working your way towards becoming a full-fledged entrepreneur. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. So I I, I think that that is, well, I, I you know, unfort unfortunately or fortunately, um, I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. You know, that is what seems to happen is when we're faced with some of the, you know, very biggest challenges is when, you know, that almost it's like it burns away all the crap in our lives. And then we can finally get clear as to exactly what gets us up in the morning, what gets us up and gets us working. Otherwise, we kind of get lost in the, in the minutia of everything. Yes. And I love what you're saying there, and I this this idea the entrepreneurial journey because I I believe it too. I mean, the entrepreneurial journey um, is you know being a being a business owner and being a parent. I'm not a parent, but being a business owner and being a parent are the two biggest self development personal development courses you can ever do. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer of that. And our relationship with money is a perfect reflection of that. Exactly, exactly, and. Um, I'd like to dive in a little bit on when you think about money. Yes. And when, um, and, and I'll just use an, you as an example if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so um, when you think about money, wh what does it look like? The, off the top of your head, can you tell me, what does money look like? Well, now you're coaching some. You're, you're coaching me, and just oh, I as, don't mean to coach you. I'm oh, no. just asking. You. Oh no, no, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I we're delving into coaching, but but I maybe a, maybe a better way to say it is I've I've actually done a lot of shifts around uh, my my version of money. So what I think about it now is something that is uh, supportive, wants to take care of me. Um, that's, that's where, um, that, that's kind of what I'm feeling now. If you were asking me like five years ago, I would have said, I would have thought money was fickle. <laughs> right. Right. But what, what I'm asking you is what does it look like? Oh, you mean what it actually, not how you feel about it, but what does it look like? Oh, isn't that interesting that I went to feel, huh? Um, so it, to me, it looks like, um, I, uh, I guess, almost like uh like an angel i guess is is probably the just this white this this beautiful flowing angel okay so how how do you know the difference between a one dollar bill and a hundred dollar bill um what does it look like question oh well one's got two zeros at the end of it and one doesn't <laughs> <laughs> okay. So apparently I'm not answering the questions correctly. No, no, and, and this is this is you are so perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Because a lot of individuals they're clueless on really what does money look like? I mean, physically, tangibly. So if you if you oh, pull I see money where out you're of going your this, wallet, yes. I, I was so going with the relationship because I'd done work around the you know like you know what does money represent to you? Because like a um, yeah, so the, the your relationship with money. Got it. Yes, a little yeah. green piece of paper or whatever. Yes. In, in the U.S., it's a green piece of paper. In other countries, it looks like monopoly money. 
Yes. And, and, and when you look at it, it's, it's, you've got the artwork, the designs, you have the, the texture and you can actually feel like if you're holding a hundred dollar bill and you, you actually rub your finger across Benjamin Franklin's forehead, you can feel the ripples on his forehead. And the, the main thing is when you want to start having wealth, or if you're an entrepreneur, let's say you want to have a business that is going to be international, have symbols of money from around the world around you. Look at it, touch it, feel it, really pay attention to the texture of it and get to know money physically rather than just what is your relationship with money, which is a lot of, a lot of individuals, we do, they do coach you. How do you feel about money? What is your relationship with money? But a lot of them, they don't tell you to actually look at it, to pay attention to it. And when you pay attention to money, that's when you actually start getting the relationship is not just with a piece of paper. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. And I, 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 I apologize. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> here, I thought I thought we were just like this deep question here. I didn't, not like, oh, you just want to know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> just off the top of your head, just what does it look like? <laughs> yeah. No, I was, and, I was like, I'm thinking we're going in this whole relationship thing. That's really funny. Mm -hmm. See, I have. Been, this is what happens when you've been coached too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I definitely understand that. And and that is so perfect, Michelle. Is when we step back and we start with just the basics, the foundation of 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 our belief systems or a foundation of. What does money look like? I mean, physically, tangibly. And, and moving from there, because that gives you a starting point of really being able to identify with this. And if you were married, and I asked you, what does your husband look like? You, most women would say, oh, he's really handsome, and he's six foot three. But when we talk about money, women normally go towards uh, it feels like this or it, it's they give it symbology. Yeah, that's Which true. makes it not real. Right. And so thank you for, for really showing the perfect example on that. Um, you're so fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I know you saying that now, it's a good save. <laughs> <laughs> no, really that, because it, it really, you really demonstrate it precisely the first thing that most people do. Yeah. And I, I did it. I did it myself numerous times. <laughs> That's so, and, and then once I really started really looking at the art, the design, the, how much is going in there, I even joined a coin club that talks about the history of the artist of people who create the money. And it's, it's like fascinating. And because of that, it's given me this reverence and this knowingness that money will always be able to be available to me, but also I'll be able to create wealth in my relationships and staying in the moment and being able to really be here now so that I can create and be aware. Well, and when you look at it physically, I mean, that's actually very grounding. I mean, you know, when you when you go into the like the tarot, um, you know, earth is is, you know, kind of the, the seed of manifestation, you know, because it, it's and 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 because, and, you know, and so it's grounding. So if you really think like wealth is grounding. I mean, where do we get gold, which is, you know, what, what was the the, you know, that's out of the earth. And so, yeah, so I think bringing it back to its physical form, you know, I, cause it, it, it's true. I mean, we go into, and I, I, and I think, you know, I do think looking at your relationship, like how you feel about it, cause obviously if you are repelled by it, that's not going to be helpful, but I think you're right. Bringing it back to the physical, just the groundingness of it, I think can be really helpful. Yes. Yes. And then just starting with the basics of, of really, getting grounded with that 
And, you know, if you wanted to go more into the coaching, then, then, you know, that's not for the, the podcast here, but to really understand that you start with the foundation, you start with the grounding, you get to know the, 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 the commodity. And it doesn't have to be quote unquote money. If you wanted to get to know how to get a sponsor, well, the first thing you would do is you would start with the basic foundation of what does that entity, what does that person, what do they look like? What do they do? How do they make things go? Or if you're looking at creating your first book or you're looking at creating a new product, really looking at the fundamentals of that is going to help your business move forward because then you're starting with the earth, the grounding, and you're building it up from there. So then what would be, a, a, so so what you would su- suggest doing this, like actually, you know, like you had mentioned, surrounding yourself with actual money, feeling it, looking it. I mean, do you have any kind of rituals or any daily practices around this? Absolutely. Um, one of the, the practices is to tape money around the house. Um, it's especially good if you tape it on the mirror. And I <laughs> I like to talk to it and have a conversation with it. I it's not actually answered me back, so not uh, not yet anyways. <laughs> it's it, 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 there's it's there's still time. <laughs> yes, there's still time. There's still time. So really talking to it and rubbing it and telling it how much I appreciate it. I bring in gratitude. I bring in appreciation. I thank it for being in my life. And you know, I start triggering on a conscious physical level within me, emotions and feelings of really feeling that I'm being supported by money now. And when I don't feel like I'm supported by money, I realize I didn't say thank you to it. I did not touch it that morning. I did not rub it that morning. I didn't pay attention to it. And when you no longer pay attention to it. It just seems to slip away. Your bills seem to increase. And when you do pay attention to it, if you actually start paying attention to your numbers and you pay attention to the money itself, then you're able to increase it. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that that makes total sense. Right. So that's that's some of the rituals. The other rituals that I like to have is is I have... um, Behind my driver's license, I always carry money. And whenever I have to take my driver's license in and out of my wallet, when I put put it back into my wallet, I always say money's back in me. And it's literally behind my picture, so it's backing me. And so little rituals like that helps you pay attention to the physical earthiness of money, but it also helps you to be mindful of how are you going to create more of this. And there's not really a lack of money in circulation. That's honestly not true. There is more money in circulation now than there's ever been in the history of the world. And so it's just a matter of deciding to have that direction towards you. And you start with an idea. And then you're in you charge for the idea once you bring it out there into the world, which most entrepreneurs actually understand that. Right. Yeah, I I really love that. So the 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 phys, you know the what you're talking about using kind of that physical groundiness, talking to it, all of that to really just improve your relation. You know, pay attention to it because if you don't pay attention to money, why should why why would money stick around? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So is there an, another step or another tip? The other tip that I I use, which is related to money, but you can use this in all areas of your life. And I honestly attribute this to saving my sanity. <laughs> so what I'm going to teach you is a really quick and easy moment to tap into your present moment, which is the field of all potentiality. 
And as an entrepreneur, tapping into the field of all potentiality is going to skyrocket your business. So if you're driving, please do not close your eyes in this exercise. <laughs> That's always good advice. <laughs> yes. So the the this and, and practice this. So you take your pointer finger and your thumb and you put it together just like you're making a circle like the OK sign on both hands. And I like to do this and then I like to put it up to my eyes and then pretend I have like little fancy glasses with my fingers. And it just it it brings me right here right now and it makes me feel a little kiddish. It so it triggers my creativity. And then you take the tip of your tongue and you reach on the roof of your mouth. There's a little mound behind your teeth that's in the center. You put the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And then you also have your fingers in this in the position where you point your finger and your thumbs together. And now we're going to take in three deep breaths. And then breathe out. A second breath in. And breathe out. A third breath in. Breathe out. Now I want you to close your eyes, and this time I want you to breathe in, focused, balanced, centered. I want you to hold it for a second. Imagine this breath going all the way down to your toes, and then breathe out anything that is not focused, balanced, centered. And then we're going to breathe in focused, balanced, centered one more time, all the way down to your toes. Hold it for a second and breathe out anything that's not focused, balanced, centered. One last time, really deep breath, focused, balanced, centered. Hold it at the top. Breathe out. Let go of your fingers, let go of your tongue. And then pay attention to what's going on with your mind. That's really cool. Yes. So this brought you into the present moment. It stirred up your creativity, which all entrepreneurs need in order to prevent burnout and in order to create what their next program is, their next project or their next idea. And then it also brings you into the gap between thoughts. And when you're in that gap between thoughts, when you're in that silence for even if it's just a millisecond, you're in the field of all potentiality. This is where your soul essence, your higher self, God, source, whatever you would call that, that's where that speaks to you for bringing out what you're meant to bring and create into this world. And when you do that four, five, six times a day, it takes less than 30 seconds. So I'm, most individuals can probably spare a few minutes throughout the entire day. Even if you're in the bathroom, ladies, you can always sit down and just breathe and let go and and release on more than just the physical level. And then this will empower you to, to be able to start tapping into single destiny, which means your your destiny becomes in sync with your life. And it'll help you with overthinking, stress, and frustration. Yeah, staying into the mindfulness and staying in the present moment, I think is just key to so much, because that certainly helped me a lot. Yes, absolutely. And it seems like a very simple, quick and easy. And there's been probably billions of studies done on meditation if you cannot meditate and you just did this, you just meditate it. Yep. That's the beauty of meditation. There's actually more than one way to meditate, even though you don't know it. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you. Um, if, if somebody, so are you, are you have a, a gift for everybody, all, all my listeners, if you wanted yes. to kind of share about that. Absolutely. So we were talking about as entrepreneurs tapping into your creativity, will really help you tap into your ideas and be able to help you create your packages and stuff. So I have this really incredible instructional 
booklet that teaches you how to create your own wealthy bohemian money pouch, which will take you from being where you're at to becoming a money magnet. And I've had so many individuals that were absolutely ecstatic. I had one lady use this instructional manual. She created her money pouch. She already had an event that she was going to be speaking at and providing at. They had the price. She said, this is how much I charge. She showed up at the event after she started doing the money pouch exercises and the instructions, and the person paid her three times the amount that she asked for. Wow. So stuff like that happens when you tap into your creativity. And so the Wealthy Bohemian Money Pouch is going to help you tap into your creativity and help you become a more of a money magnet. And I think that's something we could all probably use a little bit more of. So <laughs> thank yes. you. Yes. So the link to get that is actually going to be in the show notes. So if you head on over to lovebasebiz.com or lovebasebizblog.com, um, you can check it out and you will find the link to that there. So, uh, and as well as um, how to get in touch with Lucy. So thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. This has been super phenomenal. You are fantastic. Fantastic. I'm so excited that you've had me on your show. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. You are you are absolutely perfect. You are just the perfect the perfect guest for the Love Based Money podcast. So thank you for sharing your wisdom. And I want to thank everybody listening as well. So thank you for tuning in. Remember, you can get more great tips on the Love Base Money and Mindset book. And definitely come to the blog to get Lucy's gift, to learn how to join the Love Base uh, business movement and all that other fun stuff. So lovebasebiz.com. Thanks so much. And I will talk to you all next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle. I am the mystic wealth creator, a mentor for conscious women entrepreneurs, helping them create more freedom in their business through conscious wealth creation. I would love to extend to you a free gift. And all you need to do is go to my website at lucymcmonocle.com that's l-u-c-i-m-c-m-o-n-a-g-l-e dot com to get your free gift so until next time abundant blessings <laughs>